We're back at the seaport in Boston. Dave Vellante and Paul Gillen, you're watching theCUBE's coverage of Red Hat Summit 2022. A little different this year, a smaller venue, uh, maybe a thousand people, love the keynotes, compressed, big virtual audience, so we're happy to be coming to you live, face to face. Uh, it's, it's been a while since we've had these, a lot of, for a lot of folks, this is their first in-person event. You know, it's kind of weird getting used to that, but uh, I think in the next few months, it's going to become the new sort of quasi-abnormal. Francis Chow is here, he's the Vice President and GM of In-Vehicle OS and Edge at Red Hat. Francis, welcome, that's the most interesting title we've had <laughs> all week. So thanks for coming back Thank you, here. Dave. Thank you, Paul, for having me here. So the edge, I mean, the edge is, we heard about the International Space Station, we heard about ski boots, of course, in vehicle. What's the edge to you? Well, to, to me, edge actually could mean many different things, right? The way we look at edge is, there is the traditional enterprise edge, where this is the second tier, third tier data centers, that just an extension from your core, the network, and your uh, centralized data center, right, to remote locations. And then uh, there are uh, like telco edge, right, where we know about the 5G network, right, where you deploy base stations, and which would have a different set of requirements, right, of traditional enterprise edge networks. And then there are uh, uh, operational edge, where we see the line of business are operating on those locations. Right? Things like manufacturing floor, oil rigs, retail store, right? So a very wide variety uh, of Elf Edge that are doing OT type of technology. And then last but not least, there is the customer on, or kind of device edge, where we, we're now putting things into things like cars, as you said, like ski boot, and, and have that interaction with uh, the end consumers. Is this why, uh, I mean, there's a lot of excitement at Red, I could tell among the Red Hat people about this GM deal here. Is this why that's so exciting to them? This really in, encompasses sort of all of those variants of the edge in, in the in automotive, in, in automobile experience, doesn't it? I, I think why this is exciting uh, to the industry and also to us is that if you look at traditionally how automotive has designed, right? Uh, the way the architect uh, vehicle today has many, many subsystems. They are all purpose-built, very tightly cut, coupled with hardware and software. And it's very difficult to reuse, right? So their cost of development is high. Uh, the time to develop is long. And adding to that, there is a lengthy safety certification process, which also kind of make it hard, because every time you make a change in the system, you have to recertify it again. Right. And typically it takes about six to 12 months to do, so every time you make a change. So very lengthy process, which is important because we want to ensure occupants are safe in a vehicle. Now what we bring to the table, which I think is super exciting, is we bring this platform approach. Now you can use a consistent platform that is open, and you can actually now run multiple domain applications on the same platform, which means uh, automakers can reuse components across model years and brands, mm -hmm. right? That will lower the development costs. Now, I think one of the key things that we bring to the table is that we introduce a new safety certification approach called continuous safety certification. We actually announced that in our summit last year with the intent, hey, we're going to deliver this functionally certified Linux platform, which is the first for Linux. And the way we do it is uh, we work with our partner, Exceda, to try to define that approach. And at a high level, the idea really is to automate that certification process just like how we automate software development. Right? We are adding that monitoring capabilities uh, with functional safety related artifacts in our CICD pipeline, and we're able to aim to cut back, cut, cut that kind of certification time to a fraction of what is needed today, right? So what we can do, I think, with this collaboration with GM is help them get faster time to market, and then uh, lower development costs. Now adding to that, if you think about uh, a modern Linux platform, you can update it over the air. Right? This is the capability that we are working with GM as well. Now, what customers can expect now right, for future vehicle is there will be updates on apps and services, just like your cell phone, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. which makes your car more capable over time and more relevant for the long term. So there's some assumptions you're making uh, at the edge. First of all, you described a spectrum, you know, retail store, 
which, you know, to me, okay, it's edge, but you can take an x86 box or a hyper-converged infrastructure, throw it in there, and there's some opportunities to do some stuff in real time, but it's kind of an extension, natural extension of, of, of IT, whereas in vehicle, you got to make some assumptions. Spotty connectivity to do software downloads, and you can't do truck rolls at the, re, you know, the far edge, right? None of that is, is, is okay. And, and so, um, there's some assumptions there, and as you say, your role is to compress the time to market, but also deliver a better consumer Absolutely. experience. So, what can we expect? You started to talk about the future of, of, of in, in vehicle, you know, <laughs> or EVs, if you will. Um, what, what should we expect as consumers? You, you're saying over the air software, we're, we're seeing that with some of the EV makers for sure, uh, but what's the future look like? I, I think what consumers can expect is really over a period of time, right? A, a similar experience like what you have with your mo mobile device, right? If you look back 15, 20 years, right? You buy a phone, right? That's the feature that you have with your phone, right? No update, it is what it is, right? For the lifetime of the product. Which is pretty much what you have now if you buy a vehicle, right? You have those features, capabilities, and you last it for the lifetime of the vehicle. Well, sometimes right. you have to drive in for maintenance and service to get a software update. That, that well, right. we can talk about that too, right? <laughs> <laughs> but as we make the systems updatable, right, you can now expect more frequent and seamless update of both the operating system and the application services that sits on top of that, right? So I think, right, in the future, consumers can expect more capable vehicles after you purchase it because new development of software can now be done and updated over the air. I, I assume this relationship with GM is not exclusive. Uh, are you talking with other automakers as well? We are talking to automakers, uh, other automakers. Uh, what we, working with GM uh, is really a product that could work for the industry. Right, this is actually what uh, we both believe in is the right thing to do, right, as we're able to uh, standardize how we approach the infrastructure. I think this is a good thing for the whole industry to help accelerate innovation uh, for the entire well, industry. It's, which is sort of natural next, next question. Are we heading toward an op open automotive platform like we have an open banking platform uh, in that industry? Do you see the possibility that there could be a single platform that all or most of the automakers will work on? I, I wouldn't use the word single, but I definitely would uh, use the word open, right? Our goal is to build this open platform, right? because we believe in open source, right? We believe in community, right? If we make it open, we have more contributors to come in and help to make the system better, in a way faster, and actually, like you said, right, improve the quality, right, better, right, so that the, the chance of recall is now lower with, with this approach. You're using validated patterns as part of this initiative, is that right? And what, what is a validated pattern? How is it different from a reference architecture? Is it just kind of a new name for reference architecture? What, what, what value does it bring to the relationship? Uh, for automotive, right, we, we, we don't have a validated pattern yet, but I can broadly kind of speak about what that is and yeah. how we see okay. that evolve over time. So validated pattern basically, is uh, a combination of Red Hat products, multiple Red Hat products, and partner products. And we usually build it for a specific use case. Uh, and then we put those components together, run rigorous tests to validate it, that's going to work, so that it becomes more repeatable and deployable for those particular edge use cases. Now, we do work with our partners to make it happen, right? Because in the end, right, we want to make a, a solution that is about 80% of the way and allow our partners to kind of add more value and the secret sauce on top and deploy it, right? And I'll give you kind of one example, right? You just had the interview with uh, the Veterans Affairs mm -hmm. team, right? Uh, one of our patents, right, the, the medical diagnosis pattern, right, actually we work with them in the early development stage of that. Right, what it does is to help uh, make assessments on pneumonias with chest X-rays, right? So it's a fully automated data pipeline. We get the chest X-ray from an object store, use AI ML to diagnose whether there's new, new pneumonia, and then I'll put that in a dashboard, all automated uh, with, uh, with the validated pattern. Hmm. So you're not using them today, but, but can we expect that in the future? It yes, sounds absolutely. Like it would be a perfect, it's in the works, yes. Uh, vertical. Right? Yes. Yeah. How do you believe your work with GM, uh, I mean, has implications across Red Hat? It seems like there are things you're going to be doing with GM that could affect other parts of, of your own product portfolio. Oh, absolutely. I, I think 
this actually is it's a pivotal moment um, for, for Red Hat and the automotive industry. And I think broadly, spe broadly speaking for any safety conscious industry, right? As we create this proof point, right, that we can build a Linux system that is optimized for footprint, uh, performance, real-time capabilities, and be able to certify it for safety. Mm -hmm. right? I think all the adjacent industry, right, you think about transportation, healthcare, right, industry that have tight uh, safety requirements, it's, it's, it just opens up the, the aperture for us to adjust those markets in the future. So we talked about a lot about the consumerization of IT over the last decade. Um, many of us feel as though that what's going on at the edge, the innovations that are going on at the edge, real-time AI inferencing, you know, streaming data, um, ARM, the, the innovations that ARM and others are, are performing, certainly NVIDIA, Intel, we heard from today. Uh, the, this notion of you know, no touch, zero touch provisioning, that a lot of these innovations are actually going to find their way into the enterprise, kind of a follow on fall to what you were just talking about. Mm -hmm. And there's probably some future disruptions coming. You can almost guarantee that. You know, every 15 years or so, we get that kind of disruption. How are you thinking about that? Well, I, I think you completely right, right. Some of the edge innovation, right, going to kind of bring back to enterprise over time, right? But the one thing that you talk about, zero touch provisioning, right, it's critical, right? You think about edge deployments, you're going to have to deal with a, a very diverse set of environments on, on how deployments are happen. Right? Think about um, like telco base stations, right? You have somewhere between 75,000 to 100,000 base stations in the US for each provider, right? How do you deploy it, right? If you, let's say you push one update or you want to provision the system. So, so what we bring to the table um, uh, in the latest OpenShift um, release is that, hey, we, we make provisioning zero touch, right? Meaning you can actually do that without any manual intervention. Yeah, so I, I think the, the edge is going to raise the bar for the enterprise, I guess is, is my premise there. Absolutely. So Francis, thanks so much for, for coming on theCUBE. It's great to see you and congratulations on the collaboration. It's an exciting area for you guys. Thank you again, Dave and Paul. Yeah, very good. Our pleasure. All right, keep it right there. After this quick break, we'll be back. Paul Gill and Dave Vellante watching theCUBE's coverage, Red Hat Summit 2022 live from the Boston Seaport. We're right back. <laughs>